My name is Quentin D'Souza. I am the Chief Education Officer of the Durham Real Estate Investment Club. You're watching Real Deal Rentals. This is a series of videos showing real estate investors in the local area, how they're investing in real estate, what type of renovations they're doing, and how they're able to make cash flow. And you can do it too. Thanks for having us out, Steve. No problem. This, is, this is great. Like uh, I know that um, this is a, an active work site, so there's going to be yeah. some noise in the background. But you know, I, you know, I really appreciate you inviting us out. I, I just wanted to like ask you a couple questions about what you're doing here, and um, I know that uh, you, you you like this particular area. I love this neighborhood. Why do you like this area so much? So this is my quiet. Like it's not so secret anymore. Well, um, we're not going to tell, we're not tell where. Well, that's, that's good. good. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm in a nice quiet part of Oshawa yeah. and it's a, a transitioning neighborhood and a good transition because it's going from elderly and people that have been here 25, 35 years and are now bringing in the new families. So there's a big, big conversion going on right now. So we're able to get these houses that haven't been touched by anybody for many years and do some really great things with them that helps the new families coming in. Um, so what we're doing here today is a conversion to a duplex. Yeah. We're taking a bungalow that we've got in this uh, Oshawa suburb and we'll be converting it into a legal duplex up and down when we're done. Okay, so like what, as a single family home, what do you think this property would rent for typically? We could, we could probably get $1,700, $1,750 yeah. I think if we had a wow. full house. Um, there's a lot of storage and it is a great neighborhood with new schools being built just around the corner. Uh, some older existing schools, high schools just in walking distance. Yeah. churches and uh, some new big box stores just up the road so I believe it would be a high demand area I could get that type of rent for the whole house right. and be pushing it I may have to include some utilities but yeah. uh, definitely definitely would be a number I'd be looking for and, and now that you're doing a, uh, now it's a three bedroom upstairs and yeah we have a three bedroom one bath upstairs and when we're all done we'll have a two bedroom one bath downstairs okay and well, what kind of rents do you think you'd be looking at with <laughs> my rents yeah, yeah. I like to push great. yeah I like to push the limits so on a property that we've done just around the corner a few months ago we were able to get 1500 upstairs wow. 1550 really but we've done some uh, maintenance as well included so 1500 is our number right uh, and downstairs we were able to get 950 both of those are plus utilities so oh, excellent so what do you think on this one do you think you're going to be getting like 1500 up here yeah our goal maybe? again here is to go 1500 upstairs yeah. uh, and downstairs we're going to push a little harder because we've got the two bedrooms yeah. we also have a walkout basement downstairs right. and we have full accessible parking for two cars now uh, city requested one we went the extra step and gave two right so we're going to go and push the limits probably ask the 1100 um i may start at 1150 and see how it goes but 1100 is like where i'd like to fall in for a property like this. So you went from 1700 to 2600 Yes. That's awesome. What kind of cash flow do you think you'd see on this Typically. Property? Not including maintenance, repairs, and Yeah, yeah. Typically I'm looking for about $700 to $800. I think if we got the numbers that we were looking for, we'd be in around that $800 range. $800 cash flow per cash month. Cash flow per month, yeah. Oh man, another high five. <laughs> That's awesome. It's Learn for the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know what, this is, this is definitely, I mean, you can get a couple of those under your belt. Yeah. And you know, you have your money working for you, not you working for your money. That's you right. That's the key, right? That's right. So that's, that's really good stuff. The other thing, we're helping this community turn around and make it effective and, and uh, affordable for a lot of these. These houses right now are seeing a big increase in price as the Durham region wow. is everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, so to help families get into a price point, into a good neighborhood, I mean, maybe it's, it's the solution somebody needs. So it works on all sides and it's a win-win for everybody. Excellent. That's great. If, if somebody was just you know starting out or thinking about doing renovations or thinking about buying an investment property, what kind of advice would you would you give them to? You know? I would say your first investment has to be in yourself. I mean, if you're going into it without any knowledge or without any uh, experience as well, I mean, you're really putting yourself in a tough spot, right? So to hedge that bet, put some time into yourself first. Uh, don't be so excited to just buy. That's always the the reaction. But I think if you invest in yourself first, you'll find you'll save yourself a lot of money in the long run. Uh, you won't waste money, and that's that's the key. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. You don't want to do that. So you want to you, you, you want to be tight on your renovation costs, but high on your lift value. Always, yeah. yeah. We're looking to minimize as much as we can wherever we can for for good value. We don't want to minimize our quality but we'd like to minimize our costs. So anytime we can shave a couple points, and maybe that means I, I use a couple extra contractors as opposed to having just one guy do the whole thing, or maybe I change my solution 
to uh, simple problems like creating a, a parking spot. I mean, yeah. we were in a spot where we were getting quotes in the twenty-five to three thousand dollar range. Wow. When we were all said and done, we were in about nineteen hundred, eighteen hundred. That's it. You know, so we, we took advantage of some good use. contacts, you network, network. Yeah. We networked with some of our landscaping friends, found out they had a bunch of railroad ties just sitting around their yard that they just weren't using. Yeah. Uh, we were able to get them at a discount and really saved us a lot of money. So That's huge. You know, yeah, things half, like that. Half of what you would have uh, normally paid, you were able to get that uh, driveway extension. Right, and, and again, we lost, we lost control of time through that quote as well. We were going to be one of a list of however many to get done before winter. Um, and that was really the bigger problem. Like the money was one thing, right. but I didn't like not having control of the schedule. So with our way, we were able to get it done. Two days, we were in and out. Uh, I met the guy on Monday. We were done by Thursday, and all said and done, and I saved myself some money. So that was great. Cool. And uh, I love your hat, by the way. That's yeah, thank you. Thank you. The new brand, yeah. Mr. Mr. Nesting. Mr. Nesting. We're uh, we're yeah. trying to help people build their nest. Uh, I am a realtor, and I'm working to help people get into this market and to start investing in bricks and mortar and stay away from paper. That's so cool. Thanks. I love that. That's great. So, uh, would it be okay if you took us on a little tour of the property? Yeah. yeah. And and give us uh, some ideas of what your vision is and 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 what's uh, what's happening here. Absolutely. We have some great numbers, and you know, I'd love to. to Yeah, we're going to. We open up, and the reason why we like these bungalows is because typically they give us big, uh, big space in these front rooms, especially in this neighborhood. So, we, I mean, Doing our rentals with the right mindset that this is going to be a rental when we're done. We don't blow out walls and we don't remove big things. We just paint walls. And we keep our floors the way they are, trim them out with new paint and we make it look really pretty. And uh, the big open windows to the street were there. We didn't have to do anything with those. So That's this room is, is just the way we like it. Uh, in the kitchen area, we're, uh, we're in the process of just turning this one around. We were blessed and, and I like to... I like to pick these houses that have this little hidden gem. In this house, there's two of them. We have the walkout basement downstairs. Yeah. And we got these great cabinets that were yeah. put in by the previous owners. So we're going to keep all the cabinetry the same. We're going to put in a new back uh, subway tile backsplash, big white uh, subway tiles just to, to match and bring everything in. And uh, we're going to be putting down some vinyl flooring or allure flooring, the, the vinyl sheets that we can cut with tin snips and put in place. So it'll have the look of a travertine when we're done with it, but uh, the cost will uh, be much smaller. smaller. <laughs> yes. well, I love that, man. So where we get interesting, and I know a lot of people are doing this now, but what we're doing is giving people the ability to have separate laundry for our tenants. It's a big feature for a lot of people. So we've converted our staircase that would typically be our egress out for the upstairs unit, and we've closed it off here to give us an upstairs laundry. And what we'll have is a stackable laundry here that'll be fully accessible and serviceable just to this upstairs tenant. And we make uh, use of a space that would have been dead space otherwise. Okay, great. Very, great. very minimal cost. Uh, a lot of headache to do it, but not a lot of cost. And you got your, your bathroom. Yeah, there. I mean, uh, we've got a, a simple bathroom here that we're just painting and retiling. Our goal here is to just make it look bright and white. Uh, again, here we're just changing out our lighting. Uh, we've got no lights today because our services are being upgraded for power. So we've got no lights, but we will have upgraded lighting. This was actually a pine finish to this cabinetry. So instead of changing out our entire vanity, all we did was paint it out to a nice bright white. It really picked up all the colors in, in the bathroom and it saved us a ton of money doing it this way. Excellent. It's always good when you can do a value lift without a lot of cost. Absolutely. Every single dollar helps. So the more that you can lift, the you know the better, the better it goes for you. Are, right? and, it's, it's a vanity, so it, it can be costly to customize or do any of that stuff. Excellent. All right, and let's take a look at the other. Uh, our bedrooms in the back. We've got our guys going away, working away. This bedroom is actually our worst bedroom out of the three. It's also our smallest bedroom. And the problem with this is the previous owner was a smoker. So when we got into this room, it was uh, when we were taking it, it was actually wallpapered and, and a lot of uh, knickknacks on the wall. When we took it all down, it was actually bleeding out nicotine. It was so wow. um, can, uh, you know infested with nicotine from the smoker. Couldn't couldn't tell. Today. But you can't tell today. We've yeah. invested in some good high quality kills primer. Yeah. Um, we made the investment on that side. It was a, you know maybe an extra fifty sixty dollars in yeah. paint costs that we didn't want to pay, but. It makes all the difference, and it's all cleaned out. We also used uh, your ozone machine, yeah. which benefited us as well. So the combination of these tricks has really helped us. Good. So yeah, so we'll be again finishing and cleaning up our floors, but yeah. hoping to keep everything the same. We can that. We can. Okay, we can yeah. Skip on yeah. What can we got? Uh, can we take a look downstairs? Absolutely. So you can see again here what we're looking to do is we're going to isolate off our two units. So this 
this system here is now going to be a wall that continues. It's, uh, it's carried from the ground floor, basement floor, all the way up to the ceiling. Uh, we're going to be putting 5 8 drywall on either side and boxing in all of our stuff so that's all fire rated. And then we'll create a ceiling across the top of 5 8 drywall, both bottom and top side of the ceiling that we put in here. And that gives us our complete separation for this unit. It allows us to put our ductwork across for our upstairs laundry and our venting for our upstairs kitchen. So everything will be all closed in. We have 5 8 drywall to make sure that we have total uh, fire separation and we're able to meet all of our, our requirements. All right. So I, I see that you've got a panel change happening today, so you've got some some panel changes going on, and the old panel and the new panels coming along. Yeah, we, so we had a we had a fairly up-to-date panel when we got to the property. The issue that we had is because we're converting to two units, we require the 200 amp service, so we've had to increase the uh, the service to the house. Anyways, city of Oshawa, yeah. yeah, City of Oshawa is coming in today to uh, actually increase the service from the road, and our new panels will be uh, installed by the end of the day today. And then that'll give us our, our completely separate units and our, our utilities will be able to manage down the road a lot easier for the tenants that we put that back on. <laughs> okay. and, and then we got uh, around here, maybe you can um, show us around yeah. your, your layout So here. basically what we're looking at here is we're standing currently in bedroom number two. Uh, we'll have another bedroom on this side here, which would be technically our master bedroom. I say that, and it's dark in this room, but I say that because I've uh, changed my closet layout, and now I have the ability to actually, I'm going to put this as a walk-in closet. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. and we've got a much larger closet in our back now, and uh, you can see here our window was filled in by the previous owners. So they didn't, they, they have a gas meter outside of here and we, we're going to be relocating and moving the, the venting for that gas meter around so we'll be adding a, a window to this bedroom to classify it as a bedroom. City of Oshawa requires that we have a bedroom, uh, a window in every bedroom to call it a bedroom. So uh, this will be done in the next couple of weeks and we'll get everything taken care of. And you have all the, the light requirements that you need for, exactly. uh, for our, a bedroom. Yeah, uh, for the bedroom yeah. we'll have our light requirements. Yeah. Now, uh, so that gives us our two bedroom layout. We're going to wow, walk out this into is, this, this is huge. This is a really nice size. Uh, you can see why we're going to be trying to push our numbers with yeah. 11 to 1150 because when all is said and done, we're going to have uh, watch your step a large, yeah, watch your step. We still got some holes here. We're going to have a large living space here. We've got it geared up yeah. right now for TV to be mounted on this back wall here. Yeah. We've got all of our cable lines running into this wall here. Okay which is our main support uh, wall. Yep. And actually when we got here, this wall carried across the whole thing. And this was a finished basement with paneling, tripping on my own floor, uh, with a paneling all around. So what we yep. did is uh, we've removed all of this paneling. Yep. We put in a 48 inch uh, uh, gap between this uh, wall and supported it with the two by tens headers. And it's now given us the ability to have a really open concept and flow, which, which really makes this smaller feel feel a lot bigger. Yeah, so you, over here, what do we have? Uh, yeah, so we're going to be walking into our kitchen here. This will be our kitchen area. Our goal with this kitchen here is actually to have cupboards here. Sink will be underneath the window so that we have light coming in on the sink. We're going to have a stove here, 30 inch stove. And actually, we're going to pop for a little, uh, a little added bonus and have the floating range here because of space and convenience. It worked out for us anyways with our, uh, our venting system. So we'll have that in there as an added touch. And again, we're going to carry that white subway tile yeah. through. It'll be the same as upstairs. Cool. This room here is a room we've created. That's kind of, it's uh, kind of large, eh? It's a large space. We're hoping to use it as storage as well. What yeah. it is classified as is our, our mechanical room. Right. So it's got all of our uh, furnace equipment, our hot water tank. You'll notice at the top here, we've actually uh, done the required sprinkler yeah. for the for the room, and uh, we've got our laundry all hooked up into this corner. So we'll have washer dryer here, uh, probably a fold out table for laundry folds here, yeah. and then still have some spo some space for storage and things like that should they need it. It's interesting you've got well because of the requirements, right? Mm -hmm. You know you've got an open uh, open system and you've got uh, a copper rather than PEX. Absolutely, right? all, all the things that they're they're looking for. And it's interesting that every municipality have things that they look for, right? That Every inspector different. I would even go yeah, with. Yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> They're you're all right. different. So, so we, uh, yeah, so we, we try to appease everybody. 
Um, <laughs> that's right. Make them happy, right. That's right. We do our and, best. And so we can we can make eight nine hundred dollars more. Right. That's right. Forever. <laughs> yes, that's right. So for our unit here, we wanted to make sure a, a point for everyone is we have to have six foot five of clearance yeah. under all of our duct work. Uh, here we're we're blessed with about six uh, six seven six yeah. and a bit. So with our finishings, we'll be done in, in indoor six five. We actually we're going to carry laminate right through the whole unit, but I've now decided I'm probably going to go to a vinyl finish here yeah. just to confirm and make sure that I have that extra height yeah. and uh, and not muck about with that that difference. That's great. And what about uh, what do you have here? This is you've got well obviously it's a bathroom. You've yeah, a so we've carried we carried a bathtub down here, and what's happened here? Um, when we got to this property, we were blessed to have. Uh, a two-piece bathroom in the basement yeah. but the wall came only to here so this was all closed in so what we did is we, we extended the bathroom yeah. we, we knocked out all the concrete so we could add our tub and put our tubbing in yeah. and then we pushed our our bedroom wall back a foot to make sure that we maintain that hallway space so when we're done we're gonna have a full bathtub as you can see right here yeah. stand up with the with the shower piece this will all be subway tile white subway tile closed in vanity will be here with a mirror our toilets in the corner and we'll have a fully accessible bathroom that we think is going to be a big feature for people. Cool. That's um, excellent. Can, yeah. we, can we take a look around outside? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's a really unique property. Um, and I like the fact that, of course, it's a detached house and you're going to get some serious lift. Yes, but it's a fully detached bungalow. Uh, you were blessed with a carport. And one of the best features that we liked about the house uh, well, the reason we, that I like the house so much is that I had not only the walkout basement, I've got a nice backyard and the carport, but this entire roof is actually a metal roof done by the previous owner. A metal roof? A metal roof. Even my nice shed back here, you can see, has got a metal roof. So it was an added little bonus for us to have the metal roof uh, installed. So, uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you with is, um, what, what, what's your strategy here? Are you... Um, just buying it, doing your renovations, and holding it. What, are you refinancing it? What's yeah, the, we're kind what, of in a we're kind of in a situation where we have a couple exit strategies, yeah. uh, and I believe I'll probably let the market dictate which one I take. Uh, at this point, the lift of the property, we're hoping we we we're in a price range of under three thirty for the purchase, uh, and we're hoping to be up around four thirty when we're done with it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's ambitious, but yeah, we've yeah. got comps around the corner that have been selling for four forty two actually within the last couple of Excellent. weeks. You know your comps, and uh, and I know that I've got four twenty five right next door to that, and so I've yeah. got some options here, and I, I really think that uh, four thirty when I'm done with this property would be a reasonable number to to, nice. to get back. And if it sells, and if I could get a buyer that we can make a private deal or do something, maybe I'll take that option. Right. Otherwise, we would rent it and uh, we take our cash. Flow. And what do you think you would uh, have left in the property if you decided to refinance and hold it? Which is my favorite strategy. Sure, I so, know, and ours but, I'm trying to do too, yeah. right? So I think if we can get a, a solid refi number on this property, it would probably be around fifty to fifty-five thousand. I think we could get back out right. of the property, which would leave us in maybe. Just under sixty thousand altogether into the property, and right, we'd be right. looking to take advantage of that lift again next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. See if we can get some more of that out. Excellent. So, you know, you're putting a lot less than if you were had to bought the property at four twenty five. Sure. You know, you would have been into it over, you know, eighty five, ninety thousand dollars. Just in the down payment, yeah. Yeah, just in, you know, in your down payment. So you've really been able to just by doing a little bit of work, well, a lot of work, creating a, a solid work. cash flow. Sure. You know, and and then. Um, you know, thinking about different exit strategies, always having more than one, you're really... You know, I think you had your well. bet that way, right? Yeah, yeah. I think if, if anything, you want to give yourselves multiple exit strategies. When yeah. I first started in getting into real estate investing a couple of years ago, yeah. my biggest mistake that I learned from you is that I was going in there without a clear defined exit strategy. Right. And now since my time, I've actually modified that to say, well, give me a couple good exit strategies. Excellent. And then now I can modify within within those, those terms, right? It gives me more control. Again, it's all about control taking control of the investment myself yeah um, and I don't like to be dependent on things I can't control absolutely thank you thank you for having us yeah thank no you for inviting us out and you have, you have a great property here and you're gonna make lots of money for sure well I owe it all to you big guys hey, so no, thank no, you very no, much yeah. appreciate it yeah.